So Apple have just announced that you can get Final Cut Pro X for 90 days for free on a trial. Everybody's stuck at home around the world, so I thought it was a great time to do a whistle-stop tour, a crash course, beginner's guide to Final Cut Pro with the aim of the game to get you editing in Final Cut Pro as quickly as possible. So that's what we're doing today. Let's get into it. Hi friends, Will here, and as I said in the intro, the name of the game with this video is to get you up and running and editing in Final Cut Pro as quickly as I possibly can. So we're not gonna waste any more time today, we're gonna jump straight into my screen. Now I've already opened Final Cut, and this is probably what you'll be greeted with the first time that you open the software. Now the screen is divided into several key places. The first one being this top left section, this is called the browser. This is where you're gonna import media, keep your media organized, you're gonna have your music, video clips, etc. all here. To the right of that, we've got the viewer. This is where you can see the video that you're editing um, to review it. To the right of that, we've got the inspector panel. This panel is gonna to change to display the properties of the clip that you're working on at the time. It's where you'll be able to adjust effects, scaling, audio, color correction, all of that. So really helpful panel. Below that, we've got the timeline section. Okay, so this is where you're actually gonna be working a lot of the time when you're creating a video, adding clips, adjusting them, and creating your actual project. And then to the right of that, I've got my audio levels on here. Now, I'm not sure that is part of the default view, so apologies if it's not. So let's just go back to this browser section, right? So as I say, this is where you're gonna sort of manage your project and have lots of media and stuff to import. So on the left hand side we've got this little tree of uh, stuff going on. You can see this uh, icon here that says untitled next to it. That is the library. Now this is quite important. By default when you open the software Final Cut is going to create a library for you. It's going to put that library, if I open Finder and go to my user folder and go to Movies, that's where it's going to put that library by default. Now, nowadays, with most people having quite small hard drives on their machines, I would strongly advise that you don't use that library that they put there because you're going to fill your machine up and it's going to make your machine quite slow. So, my advice would be that you basically close this library. Right click, close library. And now we're going to say file, new and we're gonna create a new library. Now when you create a new library, it's gonna give you the option to choose where you want to put it. Now I've got a external hard drive connected here, so I can choose where I wanna put it, and let's just say, yeah, I've got this folder here that I've called Final Cut uh, Tutorial, so create a folder for your project, and then in there you can see I've already got a library, but let's just create a new library here, so I'll call this Test Library, okay? and I saved that. So now I've got this test library, and you can see inside the test library we've got a smart collections folder, not even gonna to touch that today, not important as a beginner, and then what this does is it creates an event, and the event has got today's date on it. The event is where you can put footage and you can have multiple events, it's just a way of organizing your footage. I'm not gonna dive into it deeply today. I have done an entire video on how to organize your footage, folders, and events for Final Cut Pro, so I will link that for you up here, and we can move on for today. So th that's just a little bit of information. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to import some media. There's two ways you can do this. You can either click this import media button and it's gonna open the media importer. You can then navigate on your computer to where your footage is. And then on the right hand side, you can choose if you wanna add it to an existing event, that is fine. Whether you wanna copy the files or leave them in place, uh, I tend to copy the files into the library, but that is a personal preference. Um, you've got keywords, you can leave that as is. Audio roles, leave that as is. Transcoding, you definitely wanna create the optimized media, perhaps as a beginner, don't worry too much about proxy media. And then analyze and fix, you can leave that as is as well. And then you would just say import and it's gonna process and import the footage for you. I'm gonna cancel that now, okay? Because the other way that you can import footage is on your finder, you can navigate to where the footage is. So on mine, I'm gonna to go to my library here. I've already set up a folder, and in here, you can see we've got two libraries. 
one of the ones is just a test that I just created, so ignore that. And then we've got a footage folder where you can imagine I've put the clips for the project, okay? So maybe I've done an interview, I've thrown all my footage into there. I've also got a music folder where I've selected a track that I wanna use, so I've got that there. So what I can do is I can literally select these two folders that I want and I can just drag them into the library and that's gonna import everything, okay? Now, it can take a few minutes to process, so for ease of the tutorial, I'm just gonna to jump to a pre-made library where I've already imported the footage. Okay, so here you can see I've got my library, which I've called Final Cut Pro Tutorial, and I've got my event, which was called the day's date, but I have just renamed it by clicking enter, and I've called it footage for uh, just ease of organization, okay? And in here, you can now see that the browser window looks a lot more interesting. And as I hover over these clips, I can scan through them and the viewer window is now showing me what's going on on the actual clip. I can hover over these or I can click on the clip and press play and you can see that it is playing. There are a couple of different views in this browser window, so I can click up here and change my view. This is list view, which just only shows you one clip and you can see all of your footage a bit more. Or the default view is this one, which shows you all of your footage in much longer kind of preview windows. You can also change the view by clicking this little icon up here, the little film strip icon, so you can change the size of the clips and the length of the clips. So now we've got some footage in the library. If I click this, if I select one of the clips that I might wanna use, you can see that the inspector window over here has now woken up, and in here we've got video settings, audio settings, information, and keyword and sort of general information. So the next thing, we've got our media now imported and we now wanna create a project. So down in the timeline window, I can create a new project. I can give this a name. I can choose which event I wanna put it in. So it's only giving me the one option because I've only got one. That's fine. And this is where we wanna select what style of uh, video we wanna create. So I can use automatic settings and it will base the settings for the project on the first clip I import, or I can use manual settings. So for in this instance, this video is shot in 4K, but I want to deliver a 1080p project. So in this instance, I can say, I want my video to be 1080p, 1920 by 1080p, and I want it to be 25 frames for me, just because it was shot in 25p. That is all fine, I can leave everything else and I can say, okay. You can now see in the viewer, we've got a project up here and it's opened my project so I've now got a timeline. So now I can start to create my project. So there's a few different ways which I can get footage from my browser onto my timeline. I can either scan through it like this and choose my in and out points based on my keyboard. So I can say I for in and O for out and select that bit. And once I've got that, I can drag it onto my timeline. And there we go, I've got now my video showing on the timeline. I can also just drag an entire clip like this. Or I can drag, click and drag to select like this using like the range finder. So there's a few different ways to get my footage onto the timeline. I can overlap clips and stuff like that. Once you've got footage on the timeline and you're starting to build your project, there's a few different ways you can adjust your footage. Now you see this little icon here, this arrow, this is me currently in arrow mode, but if I click this down arrow, I can change to range selection, for example, which is a handy tool for selecting the range of a clip and deleting a section, as an example. Or what I tend to use a lot is the blade tool. If I just want to cut a clip like so, and then I can go back to my arrow tool and move clips around. I can also adjust the length of a clip by hovering over the end of it and you see my cursor changes and I can then change clips like so. What I would say is keyboard shortcuts are your best friend when using Final Cut Pro. So you can use this little drop down as I've suggested, 
but it's worth learning a few sh keyboard shortcuts to speed up your workflow. Again, I made an entire video about keyboard shortcuts, so I will link that up here for your convenience. Um, moving on then, so we've now got a bit of a project, and maybe I wanna put some background music onto this, so I can select this track that's up here, and I can move that onto my timeline and place it underneath. You see I can adjust the volume by dragging up and down here, uh, or that can be a little bit twitchy, so you can also come over to your inspector panel and adjust the volume like so when the clip is selected. So that is pretty handy as well. And again, just like with video clips, I can shorten or extend the length of clips move them around on the timeline. So that is really helpful. So, so far, uh, we've only talked about the clips in the browser up here. We've only talked about our kind of library. There's also a few other options up here. So moving along, you can see we're in the little video tab at the top. We can click along and then we've got this media tab. Now this connects to your GarageBand, iTunes and internal sound effects that come with Final Cut. So if you're making audio in GarageBand and you want to import it in then that's where that would appear. If you're using music out of iTunes then that would be where that would appear. Again I'd be really careful with that though because if like me uh, most of the music in my iTunes library is copyrighted material, so if I did use it in a project, I'd probably get in trouble or my video would be removed. So uh, I don't tend to use that, but the sound effects is pretty cool. So within Final Cut Pro, you do get a load of built-in sound effects, which are free to use in your projects for commercial use. So if you're looking for a few sound effects, you can uh, come into the sound effects tab and search there. So that is the media tab up here. Moving on, we've then got text uh, titles and generators, sorry. So if we click on titles and generators, you can see that within Final Cut, there are built-in titles and generators that come with the program. Now, looking at this here on my screen, I've also got loads of different uh, assets which I've purchased over time, which is where they appear. Yours will not look like this, but you will still have a load of titles and look, as you browse through them, you can hover over them and skim through them and they will appear in the viewer so that you can uh, preview them uh, far, far away there, a bit of a Star Trek one, uh, Star Wars one even, um, so that's cool. Um, and yeah, once you find one on here that you like, so for example, I might just want some, uh, let's do this fade, fade 3D, that looks cool. So we'll maybe pop that on our timeline. So you literally just drag it, put it on top of the clip where you want it to appear And there you go, there's some text. So uh, I can make that longer if I want it to appear for longer, just like I could with a video clip. And if I wanna edit it, I can come up and I can double click on the text here and change the text. Beautiful. When I click on it here, again, the inspector window is gonna show me all of the properties for that text layer. Uh, and I can come in here, I can change the parameters of the title clip, I can change the text here, I can change the typography, change the font to something different if I want, um, change the color of the text. There's the color there, so I could change it to bright pink if I wanted to. And we've also got the properties for it, like the movie properties. So this is like position, rotation, scale, crop, spatial conform, uh, blend mode and opacity. So if I wanted to, I could change the opacity of the text like so. So what else might be good to get you started? You might want to use some effects or transitions as well. So I'll show you how to use those. So moving over to the right hand side of your screen within the timeline, you've got these two little icons here. These are transitions. And if you click it, it's gonna open up your transitions here and you're gonna have loads of built in transitions. But equally again, I have purchased some which appear in here as well. So you won't necessarily have all the ones I've got, but you should have a good selection to get you started. So for example, the staple of a video editor, the cross dissolve, um, you can find what you want by navigating through the options here. And then you can literally drag that on to a clip and it will create 
across Dissolve for you. That was an interesting effect. It made me look like I faded away. <laughs> and I faded back in. Uh, but obviously there are loads of different effects in here from fade to colour, um, swipes, rolls, star wipes, if that's what you're into. Um, and that's how you add them. Once you've added a transition to a clip, uh, let me just add one. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'm going to put a cut in there and I'm just going to add this here. There we go. So if I zoom in on this, once you've added a transition, you can drag it to extend the time it takes to transition um, or you can select the top here to change how where it sits where the actual cut is okay and that does that and then finally i'm just going to talk about effects very shortly so if we click on the effects uh, little icon here to the right of the screen very similar to the transitions but these are all different effects that you've got this is a combination of video and audio effects so for example if I wanted a clip say I want this clip here to be black and white I could drag this effect onto that clip and hey presto that's now black and white. There are loads of different effects. I could do a whole different thing about this. So I just want you to know where they live and how to put them on a clip. Generally, once you've put an effect on a clip, like I've just done with this black and white one, when you then look in the inspector while that clip is selected, it's gonna show you uh, the properties for the effect. Now the black and white one is a pretty simple one. Um, it's just got the amount that the effect is applied, but some of them have lots of different settings that you can play with and have a lot of fun with. So that is effects there. So I know this is super quick that I've taken you through this, but hopefully this has been helpful to kind of familiarize yourself with the layout of the program. And then finally, when you've finished editing your project, you're happy with it, okay, you're gonna to wanna to export it and share it. So to do that, you would come up to file and you would say share, and you can either use one of these presets that comes with the program. So the master file is always gonna be the highest quality one. Uh, if you're, you know, wanna put it on Facebook, for example, you can do prepare for Facebook. If it's for YouTube, then you can upload it straight to YouTube and that's no problem whatsoever. Um, and yeah, so if we just said export here, it's gonna bring us up a few settings. Nothing needs changing. We can just give the title uh, a, a proper name. Um, and then we would say next. And choose a location that we wanna save it out to. And we would say save. So that would be all we would do. I'm not gonna export that there because obviously I haven't really edited anything. So that is it. Super quick whistle stop tour. Show and tell of Final Cut Pro. Hopefully that has given you a bit of knowledge and a bit more confidence to dive in, have a go, and start creating some videos with your new Final Cut Pro software. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions whatsoever, drop me a comment down below. Check out all the other videos on my channel. I've got lots of Final Cut Pro tutorials, so if you are just starting out, hopefully there's lots of interesting and helpful knowledge for you there on the channel. And if you like this sort of thing, then consider subscribing to the channel because I talk about cameras, photography, filmmaking, my general journey as I'm learning, lots of tutorials and stuff like that. So consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. And other than that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.